Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I'm here with David Birchfield. David, how are we doing? I'm doing great, Gabriel. Thank you. So, David, where, where are we calling in from? I am um, deep northeast Portland by the airport. Deep yeah. northeast Portland by the airport, just a stone throws away from the southwest side of Portland, Oregon. So, Dave, <laughs> thank you so much for joining the show. I really do appreciate it. Before we get into Birch Energy, let's go ahead and introduce who is David. Give him a little background, family education. Who is David Birchfield? Yeah, um, well, I, I grew up in Portland. Um, I'm a Taurus, so I'm uh, pretty stubborn. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I have a, an undergraduate in renewable energy engineering from Oregon Tech. I have a master's degree in engineering and technology management from Portland State University. Um, I started my career as an HVAC controls application engineer, and then I moved on to an energy analyst position at a clean tech company called Northright, and that's where I found my love for small business. So at Northright, I was promoted to the director of engineering with my five-year tenure there, and uh, I helped Northright sell to, to Jewel, Jewel Smart. Um, I think I was back in 2018, and then in 2018, I left Northright. I went to Nexus and started working full-time, and I started Birch Energy Services, and then in 2021, um, well, actually, in 2020, April 2020, I was the first employee of Birch Energy Services, and right now, Birch Energy has um, 18 employees, and uh, we're looking to, to um, pretty much double our revenue next year. Um, yeah, so that that's the that's who I am and where I came from. So for the folks at home, what is Birch Energy? Well, I can explain Birch Energy with, uh, I guess you can call it the golden circle, the why, the how, and the what. Why we do what we do. Our vision is to normalize racial inclusivity in the clean energy economy while mitigating the effects of climate change. You know, nowadays they can call that climate justice, but we kind of feel like we've been doing climate justice before they got the cool name climate justice. We, we live at the intersection of utility programs, demand side management programs, energy efficiency programs, and the communities served by these programs. So we're, 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 we're a disruptor meaning we're trying to disrupt um, oppressive and racist structures in the institutions, as well as encourage and bring in more minorities to the clean energy economy. And, and that's what we're, we're here to do. And that's why we do it. Now, how we do it, we're, we do it through data-driven and people-focused. What I mean by that is we, under, we look at the data and we make decisions, but we understand that all decisions are made based on emotion and there are people behind the numbers. So we, that's how we do what we do. And then what we do is pretty simple. We do demand side management, general contracting and DEI consulting. And, and, and those are specifically for the energy field, correct? It's specifically for the energy field. I mean, HVAC for general contracting, Pretty much anything that goes into the building nowadays is part of the clean energy economy, or we hope it it needs to be, you know. Yeah, so let, d define it. What what would you say is the clean energy economy? Um, it's, in my, in my opinion, the clean energy economy, any type of product, service, or anything that we do, it should, it should go in the order of people, meaning it should help the people first then it should help the planet, and then we should get the profit. It should go in that order, people, planet, and profit. We have to think about the communities we serve, not just the money we want to make and um, you know, create a better world for all because there's no sustainable future without equity. That's, that's a really great point. And you know, I think putting the planet and the people in front of the profit is, is imperative uh, for sustainability, you know, long-term sustainability. Now you mentioned, you know, you're, you're starting out your team, uh, you've grown, you now have 18 employees. Yeah. How difficult has it to start a business? Is this your first business? Uh, this, this is our first business. Yes. And we, um, the difficulty, I, I look back on it right now and I, I, I'm just in awe of what we've been able to accomplish. Um, 
And at the same time, I, I think that I, you know, I was a little crazy back in the day, but uh, <laughs> I'm very happy that I was. Um, it, it takes a, a stubbornness and a faith in what you're trying to do to make things come, make things become manifested. You know, you have to manifest your dream. And um, a lot of us entrepreneurs, it takes a special kind of crazy. So <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. So what about what about financing the starting business? Did you do with grassroots efforts? Did you venture capitalists? How did you kind of grow from you know one employee to eighteen? Yeah, that, that's a good, it's a great, great, great place to start. So um, back in two thousand seventeen, I started Birch Energy um, first as a home energy auditing firm. I, I I was going to do the home energy audits because Portland just came out with the home energy auditing. Um, score that was had to be a part of every house that was sold. So I thought it was a good way in. But I quickly found out that that wasn't my, it, it just wasn't me. Um, when Quasi Boateng came on as my first partner at Birch Energy Services, he brought more of a, a business side of, of, uh, of what we're doing. And I was the technical might. So we started um, looking at more at commercial property, commercial properties and commercial, the commercial industry. And um, we pretty much financed it on our own. And then Dr. Tishome Juru came in and um, brought more technical expertise to our team. And um, we continued to just try to create um, get our first job, you know, get that first contract, even if you have to pay for it, you got to get it uh, to make it, you know, be a part of Birch Energy Service, make it, put it under our belt. But um, yeah, it's just been like, it's been a lot of scrapping and hustling, just to tell you the truth, uh, when it comes to starting a business with no, no venture capital or, but from there, we, we've obtained loans and, uh, and pretty much, you know, finance the company based on our cash flow and um, in projects, and we put in, we we put every extra dollar back into the company. You know, you mentioned uh, some of the difficulties, and particularly like some of the financing, right? Uh, what ha would you say has been one of the most difficult things that you're experiencing as a first-time entrepreneur? What would you say is like this is the hardest part? I didn't think about would be this difficult. Um. <laughs> that's a, that's a that's a great question. So, you know, when you first become an entrepreneur, you're like, yeah, I want to be my own boss. But at the end of the day, you figure that being an entrepreneur is not about being your own boss. It's about being a, a servant leader. And uh, at the same time, I find out that I have about 15 bosses because all of those bosses are my are my customers. So. Um, you know, me being a, a people pleaser by by nature, it was really easy for me to transition into that uh, servant leadership type role. But the hardest thing for me is, you know, I, I don't always get my way and I'm a, and I'm a stubborn person, <laughs> but I have to have the humility and as well as the just wisdom to know when people are talking good sense into my head. So, um, it, you know, it's just getting out of my own way. Yeah, but great, great point. Okay. Yeah, I, that's a great, great point. You know, sometimes I think, you know, getting out of our own ways is, is you know, we're sometimes get stuck in our own head sometimes, you know. Now, what would yeah. you say has been easy? Has there been anything easy about this process? Oh, um, I, I love the process of um, looking at a, a project that has never been done before and then completing it and being successful and, um, you know, just smiling and showing that we, you, we've accomplished our goals. Um, just the problem solving nature of, of who I am has always been the fun part. And uh, yeah, that, that, that has been, that has been a blast. Also, it hasn't been, it wasn't super easy, but a lot of the skills that I learned at um, Portland State University in the engineering and technology management, um, a master's degree, I was able to apply out of the gate. So the scaling part, the internal processes, the operations, you know, time cards, all the business um, administration you have to do, I knew that was important from the beginning. So it's been a, it's been a, 
it's been a savior to us because we've been able to scale so fast and everybody's like, how are you growing so fast? Well, we put these processes in place out of the gate. So that to me has, you know, it's a good feather in my cap, you know? Yeah. And you know, you brought, you brought up Portland state university and I, I'm going to give them a, a we're, we're going to go ahead and put them on a pedestal real quick. Okay, because yeah. I, I graduated from Portland State University. I actually met my wife at Portland State University, and I really enjoyed the business program uh, as well. I felt that the professors were very engaging and, and extremely knowledgeable. They're very part of the system. They're part of the entrepreneurial ecosystem, right? They're really, really part of it. Now, what would you say, you, you mentioned it uh, briefly, what would you say one of the most impactful thing about attending Portland State for you, especially kind of preparing yourself for this business or entrepreneurial journey, what would you say is like one of those things you learned from Portland State that you're really glad you attended and were able to um, have that opportunity to learn that topic? Um, the the confidence that Dr. Dr. Dime, um, who runs the department over there, uh, the ETM part, department, I remember one of our first classes, he said, he said, if you're in the engineering and technology management um, program, and your plan is to just be a cog in the wheel of a, a cog in the machine of a company, then you're probably in the wrong program. But if you want to lead and run a company and have the understanding of how to do that, this is the program for you. And when, when he said that, I'm like, okay, I'm in the right place. And I was super focused on every class. And it, it just gave me the motivation that when I get through this, I'll be ready. Have you ever had a moment of self-doubt? Oh man, self doubt is uh, it creeps on me around every day at eight p.m. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get over it? I I know it's temporary. I know that all emotions are temporary. You know, I've been able to self reflect and see that hey, every day later at night I get kind of tired, and then when I get tired, I'm not able to you know, be as motivational or as stubborn. And I start doubt starts getting in, into my head. It's more like the, the bad guy on my shoulder, the little devil on my shoulder. So like, um, I'm able to distinguish between, hey, don't listen to that guy on my on my left shoulder. And let's just let him, him talk. And uh, we'll wake up in the morning and do this again. You know, one of the things you mentioned is being motivational, you know, yeah. uh, waking up what what motivates you? What, what wakes you up every morning? It gets you going. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I've lived a lot of life in a very short period of time. Um, I've been to the been to college twice, first time, really didn't do a good job. I've been to the army, been to many different places. And um, all the adversity that I, I went through as a younger person when I was trying to discover who I am, you know, admitting that adversity, understanding where I went wrong and owning my own issues has given me the, the confidence to say, I can move forward on anything because I know who I am. I don't know, did that really, could you ask the question one more time just to make sure I kind yeah, of- Yeah, no, like what, what motivates you? Yeah, so I really feel like that Okay, so here, I'll back up. When I started college my second time, I was going to be a drug and alcohol counselor. So I always love talking to people. Now, my um, father-in-law at the time, or my prospective father-in-law at the time, he has a PhD in geotechnical engineering. So he's the one who said, David, you're good at math. Why don't you go be an engineer? So he coached me and helped me through my whole college career. His name is Tom McCormack. And, uh, and if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't understand the dynamics of the professional world, especially as it is in engineering. So this man came into my life, mentored me, um, supported me and my family as I went through college. And then after it was all over, I was like, Tom, what can I do for you? Because this, what you have done for me is, is priceless. And he says, David, this is what family does. And uh, all I want you to do is to take care of my grandchildren and pay it forward. So when I had the opportunity to really go in to the, into orbit, when I first got the contract from Energy Trust of Oregon in 2020, um, and it was because of the color of my skin, meaning 
you won this contract and you, it's not like we have skills, but the reason why I was so sought after was because of the color of my skin. I made it, uh, it's part of my personal integrity is like, okay, Birch Energy is going to be all about bringing more minorities to the clean energy economy. So paying back all my mentors, paying back the people that got me here is really my motivational factor. And I, I just love watching people grow. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. like it. So energy company, how do you, how do you grow it? You know, you're, you're talking about building it and for the future, how do you build an energy company? Well, the energy company, it, it's a consulting company um, and we consult um, for the demand side management of the grid. This niche or this industry has been around since before energy savings was cool, right? I mean, it's been around since the nineties. Um, engine, energy engineers have been going into buildings and assessing the buildings from an energy perspective for a very long time. Um, so I say it's all about people. So when it comes to growing a consulting company, you have to have a solid vision and mission. It cannot just be, hey, you're going to come in, put your eight hours in, do your engineering work in skate because the generations growing up today, they don't just want to make money, they want to make a difference, right? So having that guiding light of our vision as like, this is our purpose, and then being able to lead with that vision unapologetically has made Birch Energy a place that people want to be. And and it's, you know, I, again, I'm in awe of the talent that we have at Birch Energy Services. And it's all been because of the mission and vision that we're going after is authentic. And I hope it stays righteous. Yeah. And I'm looking, I'm looking at your team, you know, you got James, Jacob James, you know, yep. you got Philip, you got Matthew, you got, a, you got a whole squad of folks. Now, how important has it been to build this team? to make and like make your team successful how important is a team to be successful uh it, it's the it's the it's the number one factor especially in a consulting um in a consulting role uh the the team birch is all the team is birch and birch is the team if if it wasn't for the team if i didn't take care of my employees and my employees can't take care of our customers and our customers wouldn't be happy so birch energy standpoint is we are a people first company and it starts with our employees. And so as long as we keep the employees happy, we expect that that it's more of like a trickle up effect. It's, you know, pay it forward. So um, it's, it, the team is the most important thing at Birch. Now, how do you, how you've, you've been working with a lot of folks, right? Let's, yes. you know, I mean, you mentioned the Oregon Energy Trust, uh, the Energy Trust of Oregon, U.S. Department of Energy, um, Ask uh, Energy, Portland General Electric. I mean, the list goes on. How do you, as a, you know, an entrepreneur in a new world, right, in a, a pretty niched field, how do you go and attract, you know, new clients? How do you build your clientele? Yeah, so, um. I, I'm able to, so my motto is I'm willing to show what I can do at a, a reduced, um, I'm not going to say a reduced cost or reduced price, but I'm willing to create a relationship with the customer, um, walk through it slowly so they're comfortable with who we are, and then under promise and overperform. And, and then talk about the next project. Because in my mind that our best marketing is good is producing a good product so that we can have repeat sales so every new customer i don't care if it's a ten thousand dollar contract or a million dollar contract they're important because whatever we produce for them lives forever like in the consulting world our reports live forever what we have stated that needs to be done lives forever so three years from now if somebody sees a birch energy report i want them to say whoa that's a that's a good looking piece of of work right there let's go talk to birch energy yeah and let's let's actually talk about the report what what would you say you know what are some items uh you know a client wants to hire you they might be listening what are some items they can expect to find in the report what are some items so um 
let's say I'm looking at a, a building and uh, it's 200,000 square feet and it's um, an office building. Well, the first thing we would do is we would do a utility bill analysis. And then we, we would be able to show them the energy use intensity, the EUI. It's a normalized factor per square foot. And then we would be able to show them, hey, this is where your energy use is at now. And then we would show them what we can do to decrease their energy use. And those are called, those are energy efficient measures, EEMs. So the next thing we would do is we would define the energy efficient measures and then define the ROI on those measures. So the return on investment based on energy savings. And then after that, we explain how the energy efficient measures are installed. We explain how you should commission those energy efficient measures to make sure they work. And then we talk about you know, next steps and other things to continue to make your building more sustainable, more healthy and more energy efficient. Now, are you also able to provide um, these individuals with recommendations of who to work for to install some of this information that you're providing? Yes. Yeah, so we're also a general contractor. So one of the things that we do is like, let's say I go to a, a building and I ask them, do you, do you have a contractor, preferred contractor that you work with? And if they say no, do you have any recommendations? I would say yes, we, we would have recommendations. And uh, our recommendations is First thing we would do is we would try to employ business enterprise or emerging small businesses or women owned businesses because we want to live up to our vision and um, continue to infuse the clean energy economy into those subcontractors. Because a lot of these subcontractors that we work with, a lot of them, they know what they're doing. They just don't know how to tie, the, tie it together with the clean energy economy. So they really just need a little bit of extra help of understanding of how this makes the building more efficient. And then they start to see their additions to the clean energy economy. And um, they start to get that understanding of where the future is going. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, it's kind of like you don't know what you don't know, right? And I, I think the yeah. clean energy world is, is certainly uh, still in its infancy stages, right? We're still kind of growing. Now, what advice would you have for individuals that might be, have a, you know, multi-use building? What advice would you have uh, outside, you know, of getting, you know, contacting you and, and going through the process? But what advice, what are some things they should be looking out for right now? Um, just looking out for right now, um, make sure your HVAC units are off when nobody's in the building. That's one thing. Um, buildings conditioning all night long is a is a large waste of uh, of energy use. Also, make sure that you're getting good outside air into your building because healthy indoor air makes your um, makes your employees more productive. It reduces the sick days, and it's actually worth more to the bottom line of the employer than the energy savings himself. So that is also something that I would uh, highly you know, advise on. That's smart. I actually didn't really think about that. I really do feel like, you know, fresh air, you know, you open up that back door and just oh, feel so energized. Now, now for the folks listening, how can they get more information about David? Where can they find you website, social media? If they want to learn more about Birch Energy, where can they go? Well, they can go to birchenergy.com and uh, just visit our website and, and check out some of the stuff we do. You can also uh, link up with me on LinkedIn. Just look up my name, David Birchfield, and uh, you'll, you'll find that I'm the only one in Portland. Um, <laughs> so that, that's how you can get to Birch. Awesome. David Birchfield, I do appreciate it. The fellow Portland State Viking alum. Oh man, I, I thank you for you know putting them. I love making a plug when I can for Portland State University because I do uh, really, really great institution. David, thank you again so much. Is there anything you would like to say before we leave? Um, I hope everybody enjoys uh, the rest of 2022. And um, we're looking forward to showing you what Birch is going to do in 2023. I love it. I love it. And so folks that are listening, please, again, follow me on at the Shades of E on all the social sites, including TikTok. And please uh, subscribe to the Shades of Entrepreneurship newsletter by following or by visiting 
at theshadesofe.com. Uh, the Birch Energy information will be there the week before the episode airs, the week the episode airs, and the week after the episode airs. There'll also be dedicated podcast page, so you can go ahead and look at this podcast page with the transcription after the episode, including information of how to get to Birch Energy in case you forget how to uh, find birchenergy.com. We'll have the links embedded there on the website. David Birchfield, thank you again so much for joining the show. For those listening at home, please again, follow me at the Shades of E and visit at theshadesofe.com. Thank you and have a great night.